lot to get to here. Let's start with the Supreme Court reinstating a regulation aimed at reining in the number of ghost guns, which are firearms without serial numbers that have been turning up at crime scenes across the country. The court voting five to four to put on hold a ruling from a federal judge in Texas that invalidated the Biden administration's regulation of ghost gun kits. The regulation will be in effect while the administration appeals the ruling to the 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans and potentially the Supreme Court. Chief Justice John Roberts and Justice Amy Coney Barrett joining with the court's three liberal members to form that majority. I want to talk more about all of this. Andrew Lieb is a legal analyst with Lieb at Law and joins us live to discuss more. Andrew, you're great at helping to break stuff down. What exactly does all of this mean? Thank you, Josh. What it means is that they're going to have status quo. That's all it means. A lot of times when cases are progressing, you get a ruling from a district judge and we are going to have that appealed. So why are we going to implement the rule until there's a final resolution? So this has no indication of the final resolution. In fact, the whole order is about half of a page. And what we have here is a stay. A stay means a freeze, Josh. And what the whole case boils down to, just to make it very simple, is we have something called the Gun Control Act. And the Gun Control Act makes manufacturers and uh, sellers get licenses and have serial numbers and background checks and all this jazz. And the question here was does a kick gun fall under that ATF said it did this Texas judge said it didn't and now we have it back on that a kick gun is part of this until the Fifth Circuit makes this ruling Josh and something that's interesting is of course you actually had some of the Republican side join up with the three liberal judges there is that a surprise of any kind or is that essentially expected in this case well, I'm not going to say it's a surprise when it comes to Roberts. He's a chief judge, and he likes to make these um, decisions on the middle where he's trying to maintain the dignity of the court. And again, this isn't a final resolution. They're not saying one way or the other. And by the way, this isn't like the Braun decision, just to bring you back about a year ago, where there was a Supreme Court decision that said New York's laws were way too restrictive, and you have a default that you can get a gun. You don't need special circumstances to get one. This decision is only deciding whether the, the, a kit, a kit where you can assemble your own gun, where you're selling component parts, is that part of ATF's jurisdiction? Is that part of the Gun Control Act of 1968, or is it not? They're not saying whether the Gun Control Act of 1968 is constitutional or not. They're saying is a kit part of that ATF says yet. Yes, but what I would say to answer your question, Josh, Amy Comey Barrett, anytime she doesn't go with the conservatives, it's interesting, but I don't know that it's a predictor for the future, Josh. And as we've said, it's not a final ruling or anything of that nature here, but is there any sort of effect this is actually going to have in really any way? What has an effect today? The effect today is that in the interim, since this Texas District Court judge, and just to give you a 101, there's district courts, there's circuit courts of appeals, then there's the Supreme Court. There's three levels of courts. This district court judge had said, hey, listen, ATF, your regulation not allowed, your regulation that says these kick guns are part of this Gun Control Act and you can regulate them, no good. And so that was the effect. There was no regulation of kick guns. And what the Supreme Court just said is, until the Fifth Circuit makes their decision on the merits, the substance, let's have this regulation stay in effect because no harm, no foul, might as well keep it right now. And we can always have it not be effective if the Fifth Circuit or later us, the Supreme Court, rule that this law is wrong, it's unconstitutional or otherwise. But for now, we're just maintaining the status quo. It's a very normative decision. It's something we would expect from Roberts and the Roberts Court. And you just touched on this here, but what happens next? What is the next official step in all of this? Well, I'm guessing this is going to get to the Supreme Court, but the very next step is the Fifth Circuit has it right now. That's the appellate court. That's that court that's ruling to see if did the Texas district judge make the right decision or the wrong decision on the merits, the substance of it. Now, that decision is what we should really be making a keen watch over. We want to know. Is it right or is it wrong? Can you sell kits and get skirt the law? Can you say it was not Congress's intent when they made this Gun Control Act of 1968, and it, who knows what their intent was, to regulate kick guns? Now, so the next step is that the 
Circuit Court is going to make their decision, the Fifth Circuit, and likely either side is going to appeal that to the Supreme Court. But I have an easier solution, Josh. I don't see how any American wants kick guns to be different than regular guns. I'm not saying we should have rules or we shouldn't have rules, but where's the line? Where's the difference? So what Congress should do is they should just pass a very simple statute that says whatever the rules are for regular guns, same rule for kits, kick guns. They both shoot. They both do the same effect. Let's make it consistent because I can't imagine a world where we have one rules for a gun that comes assembled and another rule where guns don't come assembled. That just seems like caca, maybe, Josh. I like that word. All right, so I do actually want to kind of get your opinion on this. I know this is kind of a loaded question, but why is it that this is such a hot topic? This, of course, came out as breaking news several hours ago, and folks are talking about it on social media. Everyone has an opinion per usual. Why is this such a hot topic? Oh, I love the question, actually, Josh. It's because whenever we're in America, we're in a tribe and we have to pick our tribe. And you hear the word gun and half the people immediately go with, it's my gun, keep my gun, get away from me. It's my gun, don't take my right, Second Amendment. And the other people are going, regulate. We got we to gotta do something about this. There's gun violence. And, you know, we have to do something. We need more regulations to take guns. And I think everyone's head gets clouded and they get into their tribes, Josh. And what we really have to understand is that this is not saying we should have more or less guns. It's saying, should we have consistency between kit guns and pre-assembled guns? And I think that's a very big distinction because I would argue that either side would want their full swath, swath of, of rules, policies, procedures, what they believe to apply to both because we shouldn't have a world where kits are treated differently than the final result. That being said, I don't think that that necessarily holds water when the Fifth Circuit or the Supreme Court rules. And the reason is we have to go into 1968 when they passed this law and say, did they even envision kits to be part of it? So that's again why I'm calling on Congress just to make a simple solution and say kits and fully assembled guns, exact same rules, whether we have them or we don't, keep it the same, Josh. All right, Andrew Lieb, thank you for kind of helping to break all that down for us. It's kind of a topic, as we mentioned, that a lot of people are discussing, and I love that you're able to kind of boil it down to explain exactly what's going on. Is there anything else that you want to add about that topic before we move on to the next one? Well, I, I just want to add to it that whatever the ruling is from the Fifth Circuit, whatever the ruling is from the Supreme Court, that's not going to help or hurt the Second Amendment. That's not going to help or hurt stopping gun violence. We need to look at this as this is a technical decision as to whether regulations to say a kit is the same thing as a regular gun applies. So I would hope that while I know everyone's going to be discussing it at home, I know people are going to be talking about, particularly on the gun range, you're going to see people talking about it on social media. We realize that this is not a gun rights decision. This is a consistency in law decision. And unfortunately, ATF is the ones that put forward this regulation as opposed to Congress making a clarifying statute. So if I was a betting man knowing how that this conservative court rules, I'm going to guess that this regulation won't hold up because we're going to think that Congress didn't envision this to be what's going to happen. That all being said, let's call on Congress to do something about it. All right, Andrew. Well, breaking within the last few hours, a judge sentenced rapper Tory Lanez to 10 years in prison for shooting and wounding hip hop star Megan Thee Stallion. The 31 year old was convicted in December of three felonies, assault with a semi-automatic firearm having a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle and discharging a firearm with gross negligence. Megan testified that Lanes fired the gun at the back of her feet and shouted for her to dance as she walked around from an SUV in which they had been riding. This was back in July 2020 after leaving a pool party at Kylie Jenner's Hollywood Hills home. She had to have surgery, we're told, to remove bullet fragments. So again, he has been sentenced to 10 years in prison. So, Andrew, when you are talking about all of the charges, where does the 10 year sentence stack up? Is that something that you would expect? Are we talking max minimum sentence? What is this? Well, the facts are that he could have been convicted for 22 years and eight months. The prosecutors asked for 13 years. So it turns out that the judge gave a more lenient sentence than what the prosecutor was looking for. And why might that happen? The judge basically said there was an inconsistency. He's this father. He does things in charity. They actually, the defense showed this video to the court and said, here's this video. And he's sorry about what he's doing. 
on the same note, you, how do you reconcile that? That's the word the judge said, reconciling it, with a guy that says dance and shoots at someone's feet. But I have to give you an aside that's just interesting in this whole case, Josh, because originally the victim said that she got cuts. She didn't even say she was shot at until they eventually found in the hospital that she had bullet fragments. And then and then what gets more interesting, because this is, I apparently don't party at uh, Jenner's house, because uh, these things don't happen to me. But apparently they announced the, the shooting on Instagram, and then she did a song about this shot, and then the defendant did a whole rap song to try and undo the shot. And so apparently you have to party at Jenner's house, and then you have to sing songs about this whole shooting. The whole thing's cockamamie to me, again, to use that word again. But I will say, it's serious. It's his life. Ten years in jail. You shouldn't be having a gun that you shouldn't be having. You shouldn't be shooting people when you shouldn't be shooting them. And you particularly shouldn't be saying dance while you're shooting at someone. The whole thing's a mess. And the good news is that it's serious. It's being taken seriously. The justice system worked. We had a trial. He was convicted. Now he has an appeal, an appeal on sentencing, an appeal on the actual substance. So we'll see what goes from there, Josh. So he was sentenced, as we mentioned, to 10 years. What are the odds that he actually serves all 10 years? Probably 0%. No one serves all the years. Like, they get out uh, after a number of years each time. And more importantly, he's challenging the sentence. He's saying that the sentence was unreasonable. They said they're going to appeal this thing. And to the substance, they're saying they didn't use the right DNA techniques to be able to go after it. So maybe he'll get the whole thing thrown out. But let's assume the appeal is useless. Let's assume even during the appeal, his people are going to be asking for bail while he's appealing the sentencing. Let's assume that doesn't work out, Josh. Just for good behavior, they release people early. And I think this is a fundamental flaw in our criminal justice system, that we have what you could be convicted of, then we have sentencing guidelines, and then we have people get out early for good behavior. So I don't think the public really has any appreciation of what the exposure is to a crime, because you need to have a secret decoder ring to figure any of this stuff out. But to answer your question, he's not serving 10 years, and he seems like he's actually got his life in order right now, doing good things. So hopefully he's gonna get some sort of sentence, but hopefully he'll get out sometime and he'll be able to rehabilitate his life. He's still a young guy and there's a future for him. And I do want to get your opinion on this. What kind of role, if any, does it play that Megan Thee Stallion is one of the most popular stars out there right now? You have people all over social media. There's been protests, demonstrations for folks who want to show their support for her. Does that play any sort of factor into the case itself and the judge's ruling on a sentence? Does that factor in in any way? Well, I think it's actually the other way in the sense that he, the the perpetrator, this Tory Lanez, he posted some stuff and he went after her. And she was having all sorts of harassment and threats, like she's a liar, that's what he's alleging. And I think the fact that he did that originally, instead of originally showing remorse, did weigh into the sentence in an adverse way against her. So yes, her stardom matters, but the fact that he utilized social media to intimidate her, for lack of a better word, really did play into it. That all being said, into unwind, Josh, I think it's peculiar that we're learning originally a person says, no, he didn't have a gun. I got cut. Then we learn about it on social media. And then the victim makes a song about it. I think the whole thing is just wild. And I would hope that people, and I, I, I don't know, I've never been shot at and been told to dance, but I would hope that if you're a victim of a crime, hopefully you can find it that you feel safe enough to go to the police because we need accurate and contemporaneous reports and let's not play this out in the media instead let's have a report and people that commit crimes should be sentenced and i hope that we could take this circus out of the um, social media right now out of the public limelight because these are real people that have real families and it really matters to them josh all right andrew lieb legal expert with lieb at law anything else you want to add about this before i let you go well, I think they're interesting how these cases go together and how gun violence in this situation is occurring. And we're now talking about regulations of gun violence. And well, you could say it's the guns. You could say it's the mental health. We can go after anything. But we do have an epidemic in our United States about people that get 
injured or killed based on guns. And the guns may not be the cause of it, but they're certainly a tool utilized within it. So hopefully our Congress can continue to work together in a bipartisan approach, because to do it just as the Democrats is going to alienate and delegitimize the legislation. We need Republicans and Democrats alike to come up with something that can help STEMI or reduce gun violence. And again, I'm going to go back to our first segment and say a first step is to have consistency between uh, assemble yourself gun and a f already prepared gun, Josh. Thanks for having me on. Of course, Andrew, thank you so much again. We appreciate it. You're great at breaking down really any story I bring you in on, so I appreciate it. Have a good one.